think that for a member of a radical breakaway Mormon sect that still believes in multiple wives, escaping would be the hard part, and everything after that would seem like a breeze in comparison. But for the mother you're about to meet, life in the outside world has come with its own set of challenges. Tonight, she shares her journey to piece her family back together and why it continues to be so hard for her children to adjust. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Dan Harris. This is the story behind a 22-hour standoff involving a young mom simply trying to take legal custody of her four children, who ends up facing off against a wall of polygamists wearing prairie dresses and singing hymns. You display an enormous amount of calm in the face of all this. Well, I knew my kids were watching and I, they needed to see me have courage, they did. Her name is Sabrina Broadbent, and she was once a loyal member of the FLDS, the Fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints, whose ancestors broke with the mainstream Mormon church more than a century ago over the issue of polygamy. Are you uh, Warren Jeffs? Yes. Even though the prophet of the church, Warren Jeffs, is doing life for sexually abusing two underage girls, he is said to maintain control over every aspect of his followers' lives. Obey the prophet when he speaks, and you'll be blessed. Disobey him, it is death. When you grow up and that's all you know, you know? That's all you know. So you thought Warren Jeffs was God's mouthpiece? Right. Many a young lady gets married thinking her husband should submit to her will, but a woman's duty is to bless her husband. How old were you when you got married? I was 17. And was it somebody you wanted to marry, you got to pick, or? No, they're just assigned to you. <laughs> I saw my father pull up, and he's like, uh, you belong to Jake Holm. Go, go, go. At the age of 17, Sabrina's younger brother, Joe, quit the church and began systematically getting his family members out, sometimes in commando-style raids, as captured in the documentary, Sons of Perdition. I could see him sad, depressed, hurt, you know, scared. And I'm like, why not try and get him out? His most adamant opponent, his oldest sister, Sabrina. Right there, you can see the woman who would one day take on the FLDS, literally pulling on one of her sisters to prevent her from leaving. She's not going. But then, according to Sabrina, a bombshell dropped by her husband shook her faith. Sabrina's husband wanted to marry... Wanted another wife, so, you know. And he wanted to marry one of her little sisters? Mm -hmm. And she was 14. She called Joe and her other siblings yeah, who had left the church. And they're like, we're coming to help you. You ready? But then, she says, her husband's family insisted on keeping her children. There was nothing I could do at that point because I didn't dare go up against the church or anything. Sabrina, who's now 32, remarried... Smile, with a three-year-old son and a career as a counselor for troubled youth, never lost touch with her first four children. But by this past Christmas, she says it became painfully obvious that her kids viewed her as an evil outsider, here refusing to accept her Christmas gift. Can I open it, Isaac? Okay. It wasn't long after this, just last month, in fact, that Sabrina sought and received full custody. On the night of her victory in court, Sabrina, her brother, and her new husband drive into the heart of FLDS country when they show up with a court order at the house where her kids have been staying. That's them. Suddenly, more than a dozen vehicles from church security, known as the God Squad, encircle them. Now we're backing up. The God Squad? I just got a bad feeling in my gut. I'm like, lock the doors. Early the next morning, Sabrina returns and spots two of her sons. There's Isaac. Yeah, my cute little son. Is that really? And when Sabrina goes to talk to her oldest, Isaac, who's 13, it doesn't go well. And I said, Isaac, come here, let me talk to you. And he's like, get away from me. Get away from me, you apostate. She tries to negotiate with her former sister-in-law, Samantha, now the kid's chief caretaker, but the woman seems to be stalling for time. She says, uh, Warren is coming. He will deliver these children. He's coming. And this is when scores of church members start pouring in. There's like a hundred eyes on us right now. Everybody's against us. 18 hours into the standoff, perhaps egged on by the faithful, Sabrina's children start becoming even more defiant. They're crying, 
trying to put chickens in their mom's van. And at one point, they give her a handwritten note which reads, we will only get in this car if you will sign this paper, saying we will have visitation with Samantha. I'm not gonna sign it's on my terms. Are you there? As the standoff approaches its 20th hour, Sabrina is losing her patience. She makes a tough call. Oh, this is Sabrina Tetzinger. She decides to give the local sheriffs permission to take her children by force if necessary. I'm gonna give them permission to get my children and put them in the van. So here it goes. I'm sick of this. As if on cue, the FLDS women react. I started seeing them bring their suitcases out. I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go. Escorted by their church keepers, the children walk toward Sabrina's van crying. But this is when a new log jam develops. Scores of church members descend upon the mouth of the van. They're like, we're not forcing the children. They have to do it on their own but they're so brainwashed they wouldn't even step in the van. They're saying you're, 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 go, you're leaving with the devil. People in the crowd are weeping, praying. We were going on two hours of sleep. I, I couldn't eat. I just wanted to get my kids out of there. And I just, they're like, well, we can come back tomorrow. I'm like, no, we're doing this today. This is happening today. Finally, a sheriff's deputy pokes his head around the corner of the van. He hopes they've got to keep going. And that does it. The kids get in. The van pulls away with the followers of Warren Jeffs waving and weeping. But for this beleaguered mom, the ordeal is not over. How were the kids when they got in the van? They were all crying. They cried for about half an hour. And my youngest was pulling my hair and throwing things at my head and stuff. But I went back there and just nuzzled up to them and looked at them like they're my friends. And it gets even worse when she gets them home. They vandalize her house. At what point they, they packed up their stuff? They did. And they sat out on my front lawn with all their blankets and sat out there and cried. It was dang hard for, to me to see that. However, within weeks, her kids start to come around. Ha! Got it, Joe! <laughs> They've come alive the last couple of days. We've been going out and doing activities with them and involving them and stuff, and they love it. Sabrina knows the road ahead will not be easy. They're gonna go back and forth, but you eventually come become like the They're people like you that. associate with. I've been combing the girls' hair. I've been hugging them every night. They've been hugging me every morning, telling me good morning. And last night, my daughter actually told me to scoot over on the couch, and she snuggled up with me and put her head on my shoulder. I lost it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, okay, let's go back. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris along the Utah-Arizona border.